We're going to introduce spanning sets. We'll see some examples and we'll go over two important types of problems. How to determine if a vector in Rn is in the span of a particular set and how to determine if a particular set of vectors spans Rn. There are chapters in the description if you want to skip around the video. Crucial in this idea of a spanning set is the idea of a linear combination, which we've talked about before. We say a vector x is a linear combination of the vectors v1 through vn if x is equal to a sum of multiples of those vectors. So we would say x is a linear combination of those vectors. This idea, we'll see, is critical in the definition of a spanning set. And here the definition is. If s is a non-empty set of vectors in a vector space v, then the set W of all possible linear combinations of vectors in S is a subspace of V, and we call it the subspace of V spanned by S. Also, any subspace of V that contains the vectors in S will necessarily contain the vectors in W. That is to say, any subspace of V containing S must contain all linear combinations of S since subspaces must satisfy closure properties. In this way, we think of the subspace spanned by S, which is W, as the smallest subspace containing the vectors in S. If a subspace is going to contain the vectors in S, at the very least, it has to contain all the linear combinations of the vectors in S, and that is the span of S, or the subspace spanned by S. Some additional vocab, those vectors W1 through Wn in S are said to span W. So those are the vectors that are used to create W. They span W. We say that S is a spanning set of W because it's a set of vectors that can be used to span W. And we write that W equals the span of the set. Or if the set is named S, we can simply write W equals span of S. So we would say W is the span of S. Also, we define the span of the empty set to be the zero vector space. So when we think about span, we're thinking about taking all linear combinations. What vector space does a set S span? Well, it spans the vector space that's created by taking all linear combinations of S. Let's see an example. The standard unit vectors in Rn span Rn. The unit vector EI is the vector containing zeros in all of its components except for a 1 in the ith component. You can see that here. These vectors are typically denoted E1, E2, up through EN. E1 is all zeros except for a 1 in its first component. E2 is all zeros except for a 1 in its second component, and so on. These vectors span Rn. How do we know that? What does that even mean? Well, it means if we take an arbitrary vector from Rn, we can write that vector as a linear combination of the standard unit vectors. And this is pretty easy to see. If we take an arbitrary vector, V and Rn, let's say its components are V1 through Vn, then we can use exactly those components to construct V as a linear combination of the standard unit vectors. How much V1 do we need? Well, we need V1, E1. How much of E2 do we need? We need V2, E2, and so on. We can construct V very easily using the standard unit vectors. So indeed, they span Rn. For a specific example, the vectors i, j, and k, the standard unit vectors of R cubed, span R cubed. For example, the vector 1, negative 3, 2 can be written as a linear combination of those standard unit vectors, like so. 1i plus negative 3j, plus 2k. R cubed is spanned by these three vectors. The span of the three vectors is R cubed. In R squared and R cubed, we can also view spans geometrically. These examples are in R cubed. In R cubed, the span of a single non-zero vector is the set of all linear combinations of that one vector. Linear combinations of a single vector are just the multiples of that vector. 
And so the span of a single non-zero vector in R cubed is the line through the origin containing that vector. On the other hand, if we have the span of two vectors that don't lie on the same line, in R cubed, their span, which contains all linear combinations of those two vectors, their span creates the plane through the origin that contains the two vectors. When we talked about subspaces in R cubed, these are the subspaces we talked about, lines through the origin and planes through the origin. And you can see that both of these can be viewed as a span of a single vector in the case of a line, or the span of two vectors in the case of a plane. You can see how going from one vector in the case of a line to two vectors that don't lie on the same line allows us to go up to a plane. If we were to include a third vector in this span that wasn't on the plane, we would be able to span all of R cubed. Here's another example you can take a minute to think about. What is a spanning set for Pn, the vector space of polynomials with degree less than or equal to n? What polynomials would I need in order to construct this entire space? It's pretty easy to answer this question if we consider an arbitrary member of this vector space. This is an arbitrary member of the vector space Pn. It is a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, and so on, all the way up through an x to the n. Clearly, by looking at this arbitrary member of the vector space, we see that it can be written as a linear combination of 1, x, x squared, and so on up through x to the n. That is our spanning set. The vector space Pn is simply the span of these monomial terms, 1x, x squared up through x to the n. Any polynomial with degree less than or equal to n is by definition a linear combination of these monomial terms. Spanning sets are certainly not unique. I could multiply any of these terms by any non-zero coefficient I like, and then have a new spanning set. For example, I could double all of these, and it would still be a spanning set. All right, let's finish with some of the nitty-gritty math here in solving these two important types of problems. Given a non-empty set S of vectors in Rn, and a vector V in Rn, how can we determine if V is a linear combination of the vectors in S? Said differently, how can we determine if V is in the span of S? And secondly, given a non-empty set S of vectors in Rn, how do we determine whether or not those vectors span Rn? How do we determine if an arbitrary set of vectors in Rn is a spanning set for Rn? Let's begin with problem one. These examples are from Larson's elementary linear algebra text. Show that the vector W seen here is a linear combination of these three vectors in R cubed. Okay, well, the relevant equation is seen here. This is a linear combination of the three vectors, and there should be some values, c1, c2, and c3, that make this equation true, if in fact w is a linear combination of these three vectors. And this equation leads to this system of equations. In order for the left side to equal the right side, their corresponding components must be equal. The first component of the vector on the left, once we do all the addition, is 1c1 plus 0c2 minus 2c3. That must equal the first component on the right. And we get the second equation by equating the second components, and the third equation by equating the third components. So we have this system of equations, which we then represent with this augmented matrix. We can solve this by performing Gaussian elimination. Link in the description if you need to review Gaussian elimination. We'll either find a unique solution to the system or find an inconsistency. In this case, performing Gaussian elimination to get the matrix into reduced row echelon form, we arrive here and find a unique solution. C1 equals negative 13, C2 equals 24, and C3 equals negative 7. So yes, indeed, W is a linear combination of these three vectors. In fact, W equals negative 13 times the first vector, plus 24 times the second vector, minus 7 times the third vector. Now, what would it look like if W was not a linear combination of these three vectors? Well, let's say we change this negative 2 in the third vector to be negative 1. 
It's a tiny change, but it actually has a big difference. Going through the exact same steps as before, but with this slightly changed third vector, we would set up a system of equations, an augmented matrix, perform Gaussian elimination, and then we would arrive at this inconsistency. The third equation requires that zero equals seven, Hence, there is no solution to this equation. So in fact, W is not a linear combination of these three vectors. Together, this means that the first set of three vectors might span R cubed. We found that W is certainly in the span of these three vectors, so it's possible that they span R cubed, although we don't know it yet. In the second example, we see that certainly these three vectors do not span R cubed because, for example, this vector from R cubed is not a linear combination of these three. So now let's actually show that first set of vectors where we had that negative two in the first component that this does in fact span R cubed. How do we show that? Well, by definition, it must be the case that if we take an arbitrary vector, say B from R cubed, with components b1, b2, b3, this arbitrary vector from r cubed must equal a linear combination of the vectors in s. That's what it would mean for s to span r cubed. So we just have to take this equation and determine if, in fact, it is consistent no matter what this vector b is. So from this equation, we get this system, again equating components 1c1, 0c2, negative 2c3 must equal b1, and so on. And this system must be consistent for any b in r cubed. To determine if that's the case, we have to look at the determinant of the coefficient matrix. This is a process we've done before. I'll leave links in the description to previous videos talking about this and proving that it works. If we can take the determinant of this coefficient matrix and find that it's non-zero, that will establish that this system is consistent for any B. So let's calculate the determinant. You could find the determinant however you prefer. You could use a cofactor expansion or the diagonal trick. I like to use that for three by three matrices. I'll leave links in the description to my lessons going over determinants if you're not sure how to calculate this. But in the end, you'll find that it's negative one, which is non-zero, hence establishing the consistency of this system for any vector B in R cubed. And so indeed, this set S does span R cubed. Again, on the other hand, if we take this set of vectors where we change that first component in the third vector to a negative one, this set we know can't span R cubed because we found a vector in R cubed that's not in the span of S. Now if we go through the same procedure, we would end up taking the determinant of 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 1. When you go through this whole process, these columns are just the components of the vectors in the set. You might notice that, so it's pretty easy to do. Once we find the determinant of this, you get zero. I found the determinant by using the diagonal trick, which ends up giving us one minus four minus negative three. So negative three minus negative three, that gives us zero. That means that this resulting system, if we were to write it out, would not have been consistent. We didn't write out all the details for this one, but it just comes down to the determinant of this matrix constructed using these vectors as columns. Since the determinant was zero, again, it would not be the case that any vector from R cubed could be expressed as a linear combination of those three vectors. And we can take a look at this geometrically. In the case of the first set that did span R cubed, these are the three vectors, and these three vectors do not lie on a common plane. Hence, they can be used to construct all of R cubed. On the other hand, this second set, which did not span R cubed, if we graph these vectors, you may or may not be able to see, but it is the case that they lie on a common plane, and so they cannot be used to construct all of R cubed. We could take whatever linear combination of these three vectors we want, we're never going to be able to leave the plane that contains them, so they do not span R cubed although they do span whatever that plane happens to be. So that's a quick look at spanning sets and some related problems and interesting examples. Let me know in the comments if 
you have any questions, and if you find my linear algebra videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to select videos, as well as access to the lecture notes that I use throughout this series. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus, I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest, happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need